is Rusty Walker with another episode of Hill Phoenix Tech Tips. Today's tech tip is we're going to look at the smart valve here and we're going to look at the pieces, the parts, the components, and then we're going to go ahead and log into it and look and see what we can read and what some of our readings are. Now today's job happens to be on a CO2 cascade system, so let's get right into it and let's go ahead and look at the parts right now. All right, now to look at the valve, we first have to get to the left side of the case and the, the valve is going to be down here at the entrance to the evaporator. All right, now let's go ahead and start looking at the smart valve and let's look at where we start. We're going to start with the EEV. This is a Sporlin electronic expansion valve. We're using a Y1268 on this particular one. It happens to be a stepper motor with 2500 step, bipolar stepper motors with 2500 steps. Next, we have our temperature probe located here on the liquid line or on the suction line. Then we also, next to the, the liquid line, suction line, we have our pressure transducer. Now, the next thing we look at is we have to have a temperature probe. Temperature probe was located on the suction line, returning from the, leaving the coil, going back to the expansion valve. We're going to look at the suction temperature here. Then we're going to take the pressure transducer, which happens to be a 0 to 500 PSIG pressure transducer. Now, we're using a 0 to 500 because this happens to be a CO2 system and the pr suction pressure runs around the 200 pound range. Then, feed all, feeding all this information, we take the, the information into the control module located here in the return grill. Now, the information coming from here will determine what our superheat is and it will drive the electronic expansion valve opening and closing, metering the amount of refrigerant into the coil. Now, if you can tell right here, you see that we do not have a liquid line solenoid. With this particular case, we're using the EEV to control our temperature to shut off the flow of refrigerant as it goes into the case. So in order for us to do that, there's a second temperature probe, and that probe happens to be located in the return air grill. What we'll look for is we'll look for a plug here up on top, and we can see the plug with the screw in it. And that screw, when we pop this loose, we're going to be able to pull this down and we're going to see T2. This is the temperature probe that is going to control our, so our expansion valve to tell us to cut, shut off during temperature control. Also, you can see a temperature probe here. This is going to be used for your rack control, be it any uh, microthermal, CPC, or um, whomever. Now that we've seen the pieces and parts that make up the smart valve, let's go ahead and look at how do we communicate with the valve? How do we check if the program is correct? What are the suction pressure? What are the temperatures that are coming off the different, different temperature probes? So let's get our laptop, go on in here. We're going to set our laptop up, and let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and first open our smart valve software up. Now the software is a free download from hillphoenix.com. Go into technical information, scroll down do you see the smart valve, and download the free software onto your computer. And once we have it on our computer, we're going to go ahead and find our icon. Our icon is just going to be a set of uh, refrigeration gauges. So I'll come in here, double click on the software, open the software up, and once the software is open, I'll take my fob cable, which is we send one out per job and also can be ordered from Hill Phoenix if you need to, an extra couple for uh, your operations. But we're going to take our USB port, plug it into our laptop, then we'll take the fob cable, place it in line sight of the module itself. Now, as we talked about earlier, the module is in the return air grill. So all I have to do is take my, take my fob here in line sight of the control module set it inside the return air grill and as you can tell by the light on the fob that we are communicating because we've got the we've got that lined up and we're starting to communicate to the computer now i'm going to come up to the computer and i'm going to hit connect to controller now what's going to happen it's going to take a few minutes and it's going to go through there and the, it's going to check its identification and everything and then it's going to log into the to the module and once it logs into the module the first thing that I'm going to be able to see, and one of the things I want to look at, we see by the highlighted number here that it is R744. We also see where it says refrigerant, that it says R744, which is our CO2, carbon dioxide refrigerant. Now, and it's programmed into the module, because the modules can be programmed for any different refrigerant, and nowadays there's a hundred of them. So we need to make sure that we're, we're logged in and we have the right refrigerants. So I logged in here, and now I can see that I'm using R744, which is what is really in the case. I also look up here, I can see a suction pressure of 164 PSIG, 
which converted to temperature is a minus 31. Now the computer's telling us that we're running 186 PSIG on the suction. Seeing how we're running 744, we look over to the coil inlet temperature, and that's actually going to be our saturated suction temperature. It's taking that pressure and converting it to temperature inside the module. Now the module, it's telling us that we have a 24 degree saturated temperature. All right, now the temperature probe we looked at down there, we looked at that to see what temperature we have, and we're looking at a 24 degrees temperature of, on the suction line. So over here it tells us that our superheat is 40 degrees, and that the valve is, the, it's going to show us the valve capacity and how far open or close the valve needs to get, and of course it's going to open up because we're at a 40 degrees superheat. All right. Now, the other thing we can look at is we can see what our system temperature is. And remember, that system temperature is actually going to be our discharge air temperature coming off the probe we showed earlier. And then that's going to be what's going to satisfy the solenoid or the, the expansion valve, which is acting as our solenoid. And it's going to tell it, yes, we're satisfied, and it's going to close that valve down. Now that we've logged into the controller, we've seen that we have the right refrigerant program, we see that we're getting the suction pressures and temperatures that we need, we see that the saturated suction matches our PT chart, we've seen that we're getting good discharge air temperature and we're getting a good reading there, the valve's opening and closing to get us our, to our necessary superheat. Let's go ahead and log off of this one and head over to the next case and go ahead and check that case. Because what we're going to want to do at a new startup, at a new store, we're going to want to go to every one of the smart valves and check the program and make sure everything's working fine, everything's wired up right, and that we're so when we start up our system, we have no problems with our electronic expansion valve. All right, I'd like to thank you for this uh, viewing this episode of Tech Tips, and I'll see you again next time.